How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop and today we're going to talk about the geometric die head, the dies, and how to sharpen the dies. I'd like to make just a quick mention about uh, Patreon, that I have a Patreon account going and if you're interested in that sort of thing where you can make a monthly contribution to the channel and you get some other stuff. Uh, access to uh, early videos and some special videos and spreadsheet stuff that I've developed and created, things like that. And currently I'm making dovetail cutters and scribes and making some special dovetail cutters uh, that will be uh, only sold in a set. The They're uh, all blued, a little bit different this year. The dovetail cutters uh, are already available but I won't have the scribes done probably for another couple weeks. I also am taking orders for them already. I'm not making a lot of scribes this year. If you want to get a hex scribe or the screw of the screw together type scribes like I've made in the past, not like last year's, you're going to have to get your orders in. Uh, so email me, email me, email me. Uh, my email's on every video, at the end of every video, and it's rrintheshop at gmail.com. And it's in the description of all the videos. So you can easily find my email. You have to email me. It's the only way I do this. Uh, so please uh, check them out if you're interested. And uh, there's a lot of videos out there from other YouTubers who use my dovetail cutters and scribes. And if you want to check those out, I do have a playlist about dovetail cutters. And that includes other people's videos also. So uh, please check that out. And... Uh, help the channel and help me build an addition to my shop and that's what I'm trying to raise money for with all the dovetail cutters and scribes and and the patreon and stuff anyway thank you guys and thanks for watching and please subscribe and back to the video well this is my original thought on grinding the chasers and this is set up here at 30 degrees and then this vice is set at 10 degrees uh, this is a similar that I ground that one uh, Acme tool. But I need to have a stop in here. I need to, I would have to affix a stop of some sort so I can put these up and set these the same each time. Now I have three sets of these I want to grind right now, but I have other ones I want to grind also. So three sets, that's 12 individual pieces, and this would be uh, severe pain. Uh, and it would be very time consuming, but it would work. Now, this is the jig that we're going to make our jig for. This item I got from Don Cossett. Now, he gave, th gave this to me, and he had no idea what it's for. Well, I don't have any idea what it's for either, but I think I now do have an idea what it was for, or what it's for. This here turns, right? And on the end, there is a 0 to 30 degrees on here. And it says front rake negative, okay? So, and then, oh, negative and then positive. So, so you know, it all matters where you put it, right? So I think, actually, now this is mounted in here in a dovetail uh, right here, and you, you can clamp it in. This little jig right here, I believe, is for a tangential cutter grinding, or tangential threading tools. Um, uh, for grinding them. That's what this is actually for. You would mount them on here and then you could you'd set the uh, Set the appropriate angle and you can uh, grind the face of them But I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure on it. This thing is marked uh, n number 29 part number like 29 So it I mean it's made for something that you would do often. It's made by was was made by Rao Mike It's a Rao Mike's uh, unit, but I can't quite make out the part number on it is very faded and it's a something this is perfect for what i want to use it for this is my inch and a half square stock i'm going to cut a chunk off of this hot rolled steel it'll slip into this dovetail part here uh, and this here clamps clamps onto it and this will set my angle that I want to grind at. Like I said, it, you know, it could be anywhere from five to 30 degrees. Now let's look at uh, uh, some of these uh, 
die chasers. Now here's a few sets of die chasers. These are all for a 916 D geometric die head. There's a few other makers of die heads and some of those these will fit into also. Are all marked. They're one, two, three, and four. And it tells me the size. These are all 5 16 24. This, this set here is 832s. These ones here are Vargas. Uh, these are made by Geometric. This surface is what faces out of the, at the end of the die head. So when you're entering to thread something, it would be from this end, okay? And it's important. And these have never been resharpened. There's no grind down. Like these here, you'll see here, they've been ground down a lot. There's still a little bit left life left in these, though, compared to this one, right? Hasn't been ground down at all, and this one's been ground down a lot. And this set here, it's a little bit different. These are also a geometric, made by geometric. And these are 632s. Now, if you look at these from the side, from the, this is that, that out for outward facing surface, these stick up. You see that? Right there, how they, these, these project. And these are a projection type. So these actually stick out past the, the die head. And what this allows you to do is thread up to a shoulder by having them stick out like this. But you would, you would sharpen these in the same, same fashion. Now, you would grind this, this surface down uh, whatever you need to, to get rid of maybe a one thread or so and then you would regrind the bevel on the top the, that angle again now here's my geometric die head this is uh, about three inches across and this has a set of dies chasers in it now they're called chasers now this type of chaser is called a milled chaser and then there's tap chasers and then there's tangential chasers chasers uh, the, I'll go through some of that real quick, uh, but there's different kinds. These are milled chasers, this style. Now this one has a fairly small arbor mounted on it. So as far as running a, something really long through here, it would have to fit through this hole right here. That's about 3 8 hole. Uh, so I could uh, change this. Uh, but it'd be a lot of, it's a lot of work to do that. So, but this, this is a five eighths and fits on my hard each lathe. So I want to keep it a five eighths. Uh, and I usually, I don't go very far in, in anyway. I only go about an inch and a quarter in here, but you can see how these come out here to the face. They're the front edge of the die head as it goes on to a piece of stock. And that's where one of these projection type would stick out a little farther and it would allow you to thread that stick out a little bit here and it would allow you to thread right up to a shoulder now you can you this these ones here because they're brand new uh they've never been resharpened i should say they can thread right up to a shoulder also but this gives you a little bit more room to do that with the projection so this is how they're mounted in here and we'll take be taking these out and sharpening these also now i have a copy of the norton abrasives a handbook on tool room grinding. This is a handy little book. It, it has a, it's old, but it has a lot of good information actually in it. And I also have a digital copy of this uh, book, uh, a PDF, um, and I'll probably put it on my Patreon page. It has a section about thread chasers. It's not super super ex extensive. <laughs> But I list a few things here. Here's milled chasers, about tap chasers, collapsing tap chasers, tangent chasers, and circular chasers. A lot of this type of tooling was used with turret lays. Uh, that's kind of what this is. Uh, these are about, really. And there's a section here about milled chasers, right here. And they there's some uh, geometric made this uh, grinding jig. The for doing this uh, these. You can't buy a new one anymore unless you found an NOS one, but the, there is a one of these or two uh, on eBay every once in a while, and people want hundreds of dollars for them. Uh, it's really not that complicated to make a little jig like I'm going to do. I'm going to make one that's a little, probably a little more complicated than a lot of people have made, but I have a kind of a adjustable rig here a jig to mount it in so but the
that's what this is for to set the angles and and hold the the chasers here's another tool another jig to hold the chasers at the uh, 10 and 30 degree angle right here that so you can grind that front the front edge the cutting edge that what it's called the chamfer edge then here's another another jig this jig is to grind the cutting face. In, in most cases, you don't need to cut the grind, grind the cutting face. Uh, it's, it's usually just the front edge. Uh, there's a couple thoughts. If you read about it, there's a couple thoughts on whether you, you grind the cutting face or you kind of cutting just the cutting edge. So I'm going to go with just the... I've looked at mine under microscope and... The cutting edge is what's really bad. I have one that actually is chipped, and that's where it's all worn off. Uh, the rest are, are, isn't too bad a shape and looks pretty good and feels sharp. I'm going to hone them uh, with a stone a little quick, real quick. And uh, here's a little picture here showing you about, about grinding and the angle of the cutting face. If you start to grind your cutting faces, this part gets narrower of course the the threading part that's where the thread teeth are and it will get start to get past center now uh, you have to be careful about the angle because once it's past center then it the cuts different uh, so that's why what they call the hook angle and use up the life of the tool probably much faster if you start grinding that it has to be you have to do that very carefully and just maybe a thousandth off of it or half a thousand so it, it's a pretty precision grind uh, so you, if you cut grind the cutting edge the chamfer angle uh, you have much more life and then it goes on here about tangent cha tangent chasers and what a tangent chaser looks like and this is a very a long uh, type of threading tool that has all the teeth and they're at a tangent angle to cut the threads and, and you would grind a little bit away and you have a fresh edge and you know, those would run they you run them straight into the, st the side of the stock the picture here of that of that and then up here another picture I probably was out of frame I'm, I'm sorry but I want to have a close-up picture here. Uh, you know, like I said, here's that other picture. So this this was probably some of the best information I found. Now, from the Quality Chaser website, uh, Quality Chaser Company website, they had uh, some uh, documents and, and for download that are also helpful. Now, this is here uh, for D-style die head, the chaser, and they tell you the terminology, some of the terminology of the chaser itself and about the and it shows you here the circular clearance that angle now on mine it's all 10 degrees and they're showing you one here that has a projected projection face on it and uh, and the chamfer angle that we need to grind on the front there and then the the cutting face angle which is right inside here the curve now uh, now the cutting face uh, is right here along this face here where the threads are and you can look on the edge here so that, that's helpful then here about chamfer angle that you're going to grind and they give you they show you how what a half a th for a half a thread one thread one and a half threads about what the angle is and what you should be cutting now a 30 degree angle should cut one and about one and a half thread angle clear out here to three threads for 15 so it all matters the material you want to use you're cutting or it's brass steel stainless uh, or what angle to you is works the best I should say and then the chaser the little thread nomenclature of the root the chamfer angle the crest uh, some of these are standard thread information now over here this is a face grind and chamfer chart so they're going to for the for for materials so like mine i'm going to be doing a brass rod right and the chamfer grind angle is 30 degrees and then on for a face grind angle if i was going to grind the face uh, they give you uh, 
chasers for diameters here, uh, ranges, and for their die heads, they, they have different numbering system, but five degree negative uh, for the face angle. Uh, steel or stainless steel down here, they have uh, 20 to 15 degrees for the chamfer angle and 10 degrees on the face grind. So this is three of uh, the chasers I was showing you. Now this is a new one and you can see the markings on it here, how they're marked. This is a number four in the set and it's a 5 16 24 and it's it oh it's not new but it's it, it's never been resharpened let me put it that way i've used it and it's dull and it needs to be resharpened so this face has not been ground on or ground down at all so it's flush and here you can see the hook angle right there this is that cutting face this face down in here right here this face and see you try to get this for you so this face right here is what they call the cutting face along here and you can see how what this angle is right here this part is actually flat right here and it, it just blends into the the radius here but what's critical is this angle right here that hook angle what they call hook angle now this angle here, I'm on mine are all 10 degrees, this angle, and this edge up here, right here, which is extremely hard to see, to see, but this little angle that's on here, this is the champ where the chamfer angle is. Now this one here has been ground a lot, and you can see how it's all ground down in height. And we'll turn it sideways there. You can see that how this has all been ground away as they sharpened it. And so this the threading portion is a lot shorter, you know. But it's still usable and you just grind a chamfer on here and that's the cutting edge right here. And it, it's never, I don't think it's ever been, uh, the cutting face has never been ground. I can't tell any grinding action has ever been put on it. And then this is the this is the projection one here, and you can see how that one sticks. It, 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 it's projected upward, right, or out, right there. So, and this one's never been, uh, and then this one's never been ground on either. So, and there's the chamfer angle right there. So that's uh, three different styles uh, that I have, at least, uh, and, and probably the most common ones. The tail end of your rice is open to the breeze. Try a chap. Vice chaps. Quick, easy to install. too much hang out and it's done ready to go get your vice chaps woods creek workshop
Well, let's measure this. Came out pretty nice. Let's, let's measure it with this. Let's see. I was shooting for 1660, so I think that's pretty close. Let's check the other corners. All right. All right. So, oh man, this corner's a hat. Let's see what, let's get this right on there. Yeah. Oh, I'm a tenth off in the corner there. Oh well. I think that came out pretty good. Now we, we need to get at least one side uh, square. All right, here's our block. Uh, now I milled the top and the bottom. And then I took them over to the surface grinder to make them perfect. So we have two parallel surfaces within a tenth, which is, they came out real nice. Um, and then I decided I, I really need one good side that's square with one top or the bottom. Uh, preferably the bottom here, so uh, that's going to be the bottom. And I came out within a tenth, a square. So that's really nice. Uh, I just surface ground this. Uh, these sides are hot rolled, and they're they're all high in the middle actually when you measure them. I need one good side and one good bottom. The top is really incidental. We're going to mill away a large portion of this, and then we're going to mill mill this the, most of this all this side. And uh, so that, that's why I needed one good side to measure from and the, and the bottom. So we're real good. And I used my uh, square master here to uh, check uh, squareness uh, of my part, right? And when, my, when I set it up. Now, this is what we're going to make. What I did is I 3D printed this. And uh, to the to the finished part obviously so what we have is we're going to have a dovetail on the bottom this is the side that I ground on the block then now we'll just have a couple screw holes and then the top we'll have two grooves one this will be the first grind set up here and we'll lock it in with two set screws then this side here will be ground, or not ground, but I'm going to mill it, mill it at 10 degrees. And that side I wanted to have a reference from, and that's why I ground this side right there. Uh, then, and then there's a little clamping piece that will go on here. And then that will be the second grind. And then over here, I put a slot in for the third grind, the cutting face grind, which I... I might have to do it on one of the sets. Uh, looking at them, looking at them in a the microscope, uh, one set is is kind of bad. Uh, so we'll see. We'll probably end up doing that one set anyway. And then it has a little clamp on top. Uh, so uh, this is this is uh, this is what we're gonna make right there.
All right, I'm ready to do this feature here on this side. We're set up here at 10 degrees, and uh, it's like this, actually. And we're going to cut this out, cut that little out, drill and tap the hole. Side two done. Dovetails are the last part. That looks pretty good. Time for the dovetails. And I just so happen to have a really nice dovetail cutter right there. I'm going to come in about 3 16 of an inch and I'm down about 300 here. And we'll just work our way in. That's as uh, deep as I'm going to go, about 165 thousandths in. I wanted it just to bring it to the edge. I brought it right to this, just so I'm just going into this edge a little bit. I'm going to start right out about 30 thousandths, and then uh, we make a couple cuts like that, and then I decrease it as I go in. Stick around, take a look here. Oh, it's a nice, nice finish, nice. Oops, probably not focusing. Okay, got her out. Nice finish. It just a little bit. Came out great. This is just one video, and you know, it took, uh, oh, Three days, uh, roughly, of with filming and and all that good stuff. It's just a very time-consuming process, uh, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> uh, not counting all the design time and things like that, uh, and printing uh, and everything. So this is what I printed, right? This is the model, uh, full-scale model of of the uh, piece we made here and with clamps and everything right uh, this came out really really nice and I could probably use this actually it's that good that I could I could probably use this and grind with it uh, the clampy might be a little iffy but I, I could definitely use the jig itself probably so this is what we ended up with I decided I blew it uh, it's gonna probably sit around a lot uh, it came out good. I mean, it came out came out real good, actually. Uh, and so I'm really happy. I only had to make it once. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't usually have to make something twice, but but I this one. I mean, I took the time to make sure it was right, and uh, that's why I ground it and things like that. So all the angles are really good and such. So we're, we're going to put it together here. These uh, 1032 set screws on the side here. 
Now we'll put these in and this is the first spot you'd be grinding and this will sit in like so with the face, the outward facing part of the die. Just slip right in and then clamp it with these set screws like so. And we will come in and we would grind straight across the face. Now this will be parallel with the base and all that. So it's a square grind and we would just grind off the face here. Now, it depends on how bad these are. You want to inspect all four of them. Like I said, these come in sets of four. And you'd want to inspect them all to find out if you have a chipped one or, or more worn one or something to determine how far you need to grind because you want to grind them all the same. So you'd, you'd have to do that preliminary inspection first. So that would be your first grind. And you take this out and you'd have it set up square to grind flat. The next grind would be on the side here where the angle, this is 10 degree angle face and that's what this angle is here. And you'd set that on here up against the fence. This clamp will be on here. So that will clamp clamp that in place, hold that in place like so. You'll be grinding right here. This is your cham what's called your chamfer angle. And this could vary. Depending on the material you're going to cut, this will be anywhere from 5 degrees to 45 degrees. Uh, Actually, uh, most cases it's in a 30 degree range, but it can be up clear up to 45 degrees, uh, depending on the materials. Chamfer right there on the edge. So you'll be tilting this up like so and coming in and grinding right here. Now the third grind you'd make, if you really, really need to, right here, this face, this is act there's a radius here, but this is all blended. This is actually flat right in here. This face, it's called the cutting face. And this extends when it's in the die head a little tiny bit past center. There's not much room here to grind this. It can be ground, but you you don't want to get it past where it contacts uh, past center because this is kind of a tangential cutting action. And once it gets past here, you're going to have to play with your die head. You don't only really have so much adjustment in your die head as far as how these cut and uh, they'll become useless to you basically. You only grind here if you absolutely uh, deem it necessary and then you're only going to take off probably only in the tenths range, you know, a few tenths. So I do have one set that are really worn and looking at them in the microscope, right behind the cutting edge, they're really worn and there's a divot in the thread form here. Uh, and I, I, I can't grind enough out, I don't think, to get rid of it. So that, that said, I will set it up and, and do a little grind on just to see how this works out. But uh, it's, it's pretty bad. They're probably trashed. But anyway, this one here will set here with this clamp. And just clamp right in there. And then you'll tilt it at approximately 10 degrees. It depends on what your material, again, you're cutting and what, uh, th this can vary up to 15 uh, degrees, and for anywhere from about five to 15 degrees, you can change that angle. This one's at 10. Suburban tool, grinding vice, sign vice, okay? Now it has five inch rolls. What I did is I designed this, so I could set this in here and this still clears the vice jaw, right? So you can clamp that, and then you can adjust the angle on this one where you grind the face. So you'd set it maybe at 10 degrees, and I could just grind that. Yeah, chamfer angle, you can slip in here, tighten it. You can do all this without changing the position of the vise, and you'd turn that up to 30 degrees, let's say, and then you come in and you would grind right here. You could use uh, a sign vise real easy with the jig. So we're going to be able to slip, because of the dovetail I put on, slip right in here, clamp this in. I can now set this to whatever position I need. If I wanted 30 degrees, I could just crank that over, lock it in place, 
and I'd have my 30 degree angle set to, to grind the chamfer angle right there. And I would just come in here with the wheel like that. So this is a real easy setup. Uh, I don't have to deal with gauge blocks or really anything. These angles are, you know, I would say plus or minus a half to one, one degree, really. I'll be able to set that in there, set this at zero, grind that, come over here, set it at 10, 30, grind that. And if I really wanted to, if I have to grind the face, I can set that in there, set it over at 10 degrees and, and grind that. These two jigs together are very handy. And now I have more of an understanding of what this was used for. I can make other things to fit right in here and use this angle adjustment feature. Whether it's on the grinder or in the milling machine, I could just, this is big enough, I can just clamp this right in the milling vise. It sure, it sure came out good. I'm really happy with this. All right, we got this set up on the grinder. This is on the magnet, and this is my uh, diamond so I can dress easily. It's right there, it's, and it's not in our way. Slip this one in here, cinch it up. And I'm taking about, about 40 thousandths off of this. Now, I have the table locked at a position, uh, so uh, depth this way, it's the same on each one. Not, not so critical, but we should be real, real close there. And we're going to go down to a mark I have, and said it's about 40 thousandths we're taking off. It's not that critical. It's, you just want them all the same. That easy. Now, I'll take them over to the comparator. I should be within about a thousandth, which is fine. Uh, you could probably have a tolerance of 10 thousandths, really. So, uh, but using a surface grinder and all the great accuracy you have, it's pretty, no pretty easily done to be within a couple thousandths. Let's put the first one on there. This is the first one I did. And we'll see where we're, we're at here. And that's right out near the end and uh, pretty good, got it set about at zero. And we're good there. We'll just go right through the ones uh, I did here. I'll, I just did four, uh, the really bad set that I was talking about. So that's right there, pretty few tenths. Yeah, about half, half a thou, so maybe one. Just under 1,000. That one. And that one's just, yeah, just a few tenths, maybe high. About maybe just a, yeah, just a few tenths high. So we're, that's probably a, a wheel wear on that one. So they're close enough, all within a thousand. I'm happy with that. Right now we're going to put the first one in of the set. Uh, I'm just doing them in order. They're numbered uh, because they fit in the geometric die head in a certain order also. So we're going to slip that in our side, our side mount there, make sure it's clean. All right, now I'm going to turn it to 30 degrees. Now I just took a mirror and held it right here. And you can, as, you, as you can see even, you can see the mark and uh, I can read the scale. So, so I just set it, did that and set it over 30 degrees. To, to Now we'll get lined up and touch on that. Now we want to go down the same amount on each chaser. All right, I went down 25 thousandths, and we're going to take that out 
I think that's going to be good. That's about, so that's about one and a half teeth. I ground off about one and a half teeth. All right, all these are ground. I wish I could show you under the microscope what they look like, but I don't have that ability. What I want to do though is I want to also grind, grind the face of these ones. So we, I've set this at 10 degrees and uh, that just slips in there and then our big clamp sits on top of here. I'm kind of thinking I should do this the other way around. I should turn it and tilt it the other way uh, so I can see what's better what's going on. So I turned it around and obviously you can't see anything but I can see in the back a little bit easier and I can see the front cutting edge from underneath and I think this is going to work. And I have the, the dies I just ground, I put them in the die head and you can see these are the dies, they're just a little bit of grind on the front there. So they are the dies. That face grinding uh, worked. Uh, it's a little bit touchy to do as far as getting the angle right. Uh, this, so anyway, I ended up grinding these at five degrees. And uh, for brass, they probably should be steeper. You know, a little more hook angle. Over here on the hard edge, and I'm going to run one part and hopefully be able to film it a little bit. That's, it's very hard to do because it's very close quarters in here. But this is the part I ran. I just did this one and it cut actually really well. Now I usually do this with coolant, but you won't be able to see much if I have the oil running. So we just go up here. Perfect. Uh, this is only halfway done. Uh, I, this takes a second off. I have to flip it around and I machine the other end. But uh, that's cutting really, really nice, uh, actually. So that was the worst set of chasers, and they cut wonderful. So that sharpening actually works really well. And I'll get the other ones done and get those in action. Now, just the, an FYI. If you're using one of these, um, let me get around here with it. If you're using a die head, okay, especially on a turret lathe, you have to add a little bit of feed pressure. If you don't, the lathe will, once the thread starts, it will pull the head in, but you're making the lathe work, work harder, and the, the way the, this head works, is when it when when this stops coming in with the turret the thread wants to keep cutting and it pulls this part this forward part here it keeps pulling it and it only pulls it oh, you know maybe half a thread if that it pulls a little bit and disengages the head and pops open the dies well if you don't help it if you don't have a feel for helping this a little bit as you're helping relieve some of that pulling pressure, the head coat will pop open prematurely a lot of times. But what I'm getting at about this is when you do this, you end up getting a feel for it. And the more pressure you have to apply to keep it so that the head stays closed and doesn't prematurely open, 
te is telling you your dies are getting your chasers are getting dull. The more you have to help it, the duller they're getting, and it gives you an awareness of of your tooling. So you don't you want that thing. So you just, you just barely have to help it. And if you have to start really helping it a lot and pulling it in, then when it starts to open prematurely, your dies, your chasers are dull, and you want to change them out or sharpen them. Just a FYI. You know, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and you know, check out Patreon. Buy a dovetail cutter and scribe. And uh, this is uh, so I can finish the scribes. <laughs> and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.